Hey guys, welcome back. Big changes are coming this week. Ups and downs all along the way, and it all starts tonight. We've got snow showers that will likely spread across parts of the Midwest and the Great Lakes. We're watching for heavy lake effect snow near Lake Erie, Lake Ontario, behind a system that's going to move through later this week. Meanwhile, across the East Coast, we're in for a temperature roller coaster. Temperatures on the way up, 50s and 60s early this week before this surge of Arctic air to the north brings much colder weather. Out west, we've got the, a very strong system that's moving in here. It's bringing a lot of rain, snow. It's a powerful atmospheric river into the Pacific Northwest. There's potential for some flooding, a lot going on. And this system is going to move east. So stick with me. We're going to break it all down today in the video. Hey, thanks for stopping by. If it's your first time, a lot of new subscribers are here. If you're brand new, if it's the first time you've clicked on a video, I'm Travis. I used to be a chief meteorologist on television. I got out of that business many, many years ago, but I found myself looking at these forecast models, looking at the weather. And if you like that kind of content, I hope you'll come back and you will subscribe. We've got this rain here that we're looking at as we head through Monday across parts of really the Mississippi Valley into the Ohio Valley, our system exiting the northeast. And this right here will be our weather system that we're going to be talking about across the west that's going to eventually move east and cause some issues here. One thing we've seen here too, I want to back this up. Look how warm the ocean waters were here above average across the Pacific really last winter. This is why I think this winter is going to be significantly different. We've noticed some changes too. We've been talking about this the area heading towards La Nina. That matters too, right? So when this water is warmer than average and it gets cold across North America, you create a decent temperature gradient here. That causes an active southern jet, at least your subtropical jet, that put the, puts the storms into Southern California, into the southwest and we've not really seen that this year also across the deep south in texas and to louisiana arkansas this year much different and we're starting to see that wind go this way at least the larger wind gradient starting to increase with the thunderstorms across indonesia that matters believe it or not that wind that starts to upwell the colder ocean waters and you can kind of see that on a micro level here this is interesting not really related to la nina but really you've had your cold air and your wind blowing right here across central mexico Look at that upwelling that's happening here. That is some really cold water here. Again, it's thanks to that air being funneled right here through this strait, and now you're seeing the upwelling in that region. On a larger scale, that's kind of what El Nino and La Nina is. Now you're seeing that upwelling. It's causing the La Nina. At least we're flipping that way uh, across the eastern Pacific, and it does impact us greatly across North America. Another thing, too, the North Pacific is really warm. It's cold here across Alaska, and I think that's why we've had a screaming jet stream into the Pacific Northwest with storm after storm, and I think that continues just based on that alone. All right, here's what we're looking like across the, the next week or so. A huge trough starts to carve out in the east. That's going to really drop our temperatures down. And again, I think we stay stormy across the west with another trough slamming uh, into this region. Let's back up and take you through the week here. Find where you are on the map. We're going to take it day by day. We've got a little bit of light snow and mixed precipitation on early Monday into the northeast, but that transitions over to rain, rain showers, and we are talking about rain all the way north. I mean, look at this right to the Hudson Bay. So a lot of warm air moving north ahead of this area of low pressure. Behind it, some light snow across northern Minnesota. That slips east as we head into the overnight into parts of Ontario, and the rain shifts into the southeast now. Our snow across the west starts to lighten up a little bit. We've still got it going into the Cascades, but it moves further to the east into parts of Montana, Wyoming, Idaho. And now we're watching this weak system that starts to slide off to the east through South Dakota, southern parts of Minnesota, even parts of Wisconsin. Our next big atmospheric river takes aim into the Pacific Northwest. It's going to put some heavy snow into the Cascades. The northern Cascades, we may actually mix with some rain here in the higher elevations with snow levels coming up. But boy, it's going to really pile up into British Columbia. Let's move east. We're starting to dry out. We're cooling down uh, into the northeast. But it's not going to be extremely cold behind this system that's moving through on Monday. We've got to really wait a couple of days before the real cold that's back up here moves south. Rain moving east, also some light snow here in and around the Great Lakes, some light snow too from the Arrowhead to the UP of Michigan here, that's the Arrowhead of Minnesota. That moves into parts of southern Ontario, could bring a little bit of snow to Toronto and to Montreal, and now as this moves east, low pressure develops here along the east coast, the snow will likely start to pick up from upstate New York. I think it goes over to snow into parts of Western Mass and then up into Vermont and New Hampshire, heading into early Thursday morning. Still some time on this. And now we're watching this next system. That's the storm that's bringing the next round of heavy rain and snow I talked about just a moment ago up to British Columbia uh, and, and into Washington State. It starts to slip to the southeast as it does so. It's going to bring a stripe of snow, I think, from Saskatchewan, Manitoba, North Dakota, Minnesota. Now it's going to move into Wisconsin as we head into Thursday afternoon and Thursday evening. So I think some snow for Green Bay. North of that, 
into the UP of Michigan, and then south, maybe into parts of northern Illinois, northern parts of Indiana. I don't know how much snow we see out of this. It looks like the trajectory at this point looks to be bringing it right through the Great Lakes, and then behind this, it turns really cold, and this is where the lake effect snow machine turns on. Some light snow possible here into the northeast, too, out ahead of this system, but once it moves off the coast, the lake effect really starts to pick up, and we're going to see rain change to some snow here into the Appalachians, too, and cold, high pressure builds in. Almost a due north direction here into the New York, Connecticut, New Jersey. I think that gets us really cold heading into this weekend. More on that in just a second, but, I mean, look at these temperatures some cases almost 30 degrees below average that puts our temperatures in the air at least near or below zero in some spots i don't know that we get that cold in central park but it's going to be pretty chilly especially in uh in, in interior areas all right here's the cold as we head into tuesday it starts to really be noticed back up here across the upper midwest into the northern plains across minnesota and the teens but warm on uh, tuesday across the southeast another day in the 60s here 70s all the way from south carolina Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, beautiful temperature-wise anyway, if you like that kind of weather. Seasonably cold across uh, Ontario, maybe a little bit above average here into Pennsylvania. But here comes the cold as we head into Wednesday and Thursday. Temperatures dropping back into the teens and single digits below zero in and around the Great Lakes and really into Ontario. And this shot of cold air moves into the northeast. Here comes our second wave of chilly air, Arctic air plunging south. This one's going to go all the way to the Gulf Coast. As cold, high pressure builds in, there comes the air that's going to kick off that lake effect. And look at these temperatures as we head into Sunday morning. Near zero, I think, in many areas of the northeast, especially in the parts of Connecticut. Below zero here in the northern New England, I think, especially once you get up into the Adirondacks, the Green and White Mountains, well below zero. Bundle up if you're headed to the ski resorts this weekend. Cold northerly winds. I want to show you this, too. It's not going to be strong, but that cold air really just oozing south, just pushing because it's arctic and it's cold and it's dense and it's gonna want to come right down the hudson valley that's the setup to get you cold in new york and i think we get there uh heading into this weekend is that snowpack here across ontario keeps things cold and we're pushing the chilly air in it'll start to warm up some as we head into next week but it's going to be pretty cold across the northeast it looks like uh, heading into christmas maybe a bit of a warm-up back into the teens anyway here Across the uh, the central U.S., this is where the, the cold will be felt first as we watch that cold move to the east. One cold front moving through as we head into today, tonight, and to Tuesday. That'll drop our temperatures back here across Oklahoma, Missouri, back into the 30s. And then in high temperatures, though, not too cold, though, on Tuesday. We're back into the 50s here across Kansas, over to Missouri, 60s over into Oklahoma. No signs of snowstorms here uh, for Texas, southern parts of the, the southern plains. It's just too warm right now, and really no storms here. The cold all winter really hasn't pushed down the east face of the Rockies, right? We've not seen that happen, and I don't see that happening this time either. We're going to turn cold first across parts of North Dakota, and the core of cold goes this way, right? You don't see that push into Texas. Although, as we head into Sunday and Monday, we do get a little bit colder into east Texas, but again, most of that cold air here across the uh, the eastern United States. A little bit of severe weather possible as we head into Monday afternoon, although it doesn't look like a huge severe weather day by any stretch. Some rumbles of thunder as this front moves through and the rain showers moving into the northeast. If you're timing the precipitation out, there you go. This takes you all the way through Tuesday morning. Some lake effect starts to kick in behind our front as the winds pick up, and then there comes that system that's going to drop a little bit of light snow here again across parts of uh, Wisconsin into the Great Lakes. Let's look at those snow totals here. We'll start with the Northern Plains first. Some light snow here, but that next system could bring some significant snow. These are your snow totals now through Friday. Maybe 8 to 10 inches across parts of Minnesota, back into South Dakota. These are snow totals through the week, so that wouldn't be one individual snow event. You can see you're going to get a little bit of snow on the front end and then a couple of more inches behind it. That stretches all the way to the south and east. I think we get some snow into Minneapolis, St. Paul, and it pushes further to the east. Maybe not as much snow towards Duluth, Iowa. We're not going to see as much snow out of this. Further to the east, let's time some of this snow out. I'll slow it down, and we'll take it sort of system by system. That first piece of energy is going to bring a little bit of light snow here through the Great Lakes, a coating to a couple of inches, maybe a little heavier into the parts of the northeast as it enhances there off the coast. 
And then our next clipper system is going to bring, I think, maybe some significant snow here, at least compared to what we've seen lately. I mean, I know. Come on, you guys are hardcore in Wisconsin. What's a couple of inches in Green Bay? But we might get a little bit of snow here into parts of Michigan, too. And then that moves off to the east. And, again, we talked about some lighter snows down into the Appalachians as we head through Saturday. And now more snow into the northeast. And here comes your lake effect. It's a little too early to talk about how much we're going to see, but I think it could be significant here. Across the west, I do want to look at this atmospheric river that's just pushing into the northwest and another storm behind that notice how everything is now starting to go up and over our ridge here and that pushes the storm track more into british columbia uh, and kind of keeps most of it out of california i think our next storm would be sometime saturday and it's a pretty warm storm too so snow levels i think heading into the weekend with that one will be pretty high feet of snow here into the coastal ranges, also into the, uh, the the Rockies here, the into Alberta, British Columbia, right along the border. Your snow shadow for Calgary, but we could get some snow out into the prairies. But heavy snow here into the northern Rockies. Not as much down toward the Wasatch. Not as much either down into the Sierra, into the southern mountains of California and the Four Corner states. We're just not seeing much snow. What happens beyond this? I think we warm up right around Christmas. This zonal flow starts to kick in more than easterly to westerly flow with a trough over uh, Alaska, but that starts to change around the first of the year. Now you've got your ridging here, and it buckles, and it gets cold in the east. So I think we start January cold. That's all I got. See ya.